All right, Patreon, welcome to a new video. I wanna start off by saying that I do understand that this mic sometimes doesn't work very well, so I apologize in advance if this doesn't pick up good quality audio, but it is what it is. It's all I've got to work with right now. Um, and I'm probably gonna render this in black and white just to keep the upload time down. Unfortunately, due to the uh, lack of quality with the technology I'm using, the computer and whatnot, it takes quite a while to render even a 15 minute video. So I'm doing the best I can with what little time I do have to produce as much t content for you guys as possible. So hopefully here in the near future, I'll be able to upgrade my equipment and uh, it'll make things go a lot smoother from there. But I wanted to do a video on digestion, ladies and, de ladies and gentlemen, and how important digestion actually is for your overall health. It is really cold out here. Luckily, I've got a hot cup of coffee to keep me warm. Um, doing some grounding right now, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, man, is it cold out here. But, digestion. Digestion is the pinnacle of true health, ladies and gentlemen. Digestion is the foundation of health. Because if you are not digesting your foods, foods properly, if you are not assimilating your minerals in the, you know, if you are not extracting the vital health promoting constituents contained within the food that you are eating, which is the purpose of eating, it's the purpose of digestion to be able to extract nutrients, then you are going to be missing out on health. And so many people who are concerned about their health, ladies and gentlemen, and I've communicated with a ton of people over the years, over the past 10 years about health, a lot of people have an underlying digestion issue, whether it be they can't digest foods quickly, they have bloating problems, they have gas issues. Um, a lot of people are constipated, and that's really the worst thing when it comes to health, being constipated. Not being able to eliminate foods and transit foods out of your system, out of the waste channels, in the right duration of time. This can really ruin people's lives. It can make people miserable. It can ruin your health because it leads to something known as intestinal toxemia or auto-intoxication. Auto You'll have to forgive me, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's so cold out here that I'm struggling to uh, talk fluently. But intestinal toxemia, auto-intoxication. When you have massive amounts of waste stuck in your system and not eliminating properly out of your system and stuck in your, inside of, you, uh, of your biology because you're constipated, that stuff starts to ferment, rancidify, putrefy, and now you have this stuff circulating throughout your bloodstream, throughout your system, it's just a horrible situation and I've seen so many people suffer from this. And the solution is a lot easier, in my opinion, than you know what's being touted out here in the Matrix. The Matrix is going to try to get you to think that in order to fix your constipation, ladies and gentlemen, all you've got to do is you know consume more fiber. And although consuming more fiber can indeed produce bowel movements, Oftentimes, it's just from the extra fiber that you've eaten and not the actual waste that's stuck in your system. In order for you to start being able to digest foods properly, you've got to look at things like a plumber and first clear out whatever's obstructing your digestive system, folks. And again, over the years, I've done it myself. I've seen family members do this who became privy to the information I was talking about and wanted to see if I was telling the truth because we live in a world where people have to, I'm not even going to get into that, excuse me. Family members, my wife even, certain people I've known have gotten on to the cleansing protocols and had amazing results and really been uplifted by what they achieved. You know, not only did it help them get rid of waste out of their system, but it helped show them that, wow, we really do accumulate waste and we really do hold on to it. This is crazy how this is, you know, sometimes people are so blown away by the results that they have with eliminating waste from their system when they can feel and see how much better they when I'm trying to put certain things into words and I'm having difficulty because of how damn cold it is folks when people see how much waste they've been holding on to when they feel how much butter they feel when that stuff is gone and in the toilet it uplifts people's consciousness it makes them feel better they feel free they feel light health is largely you know you're supposed to feel light you're supposed to feel unrestricted you're supposed to feel strong as well, just like a feather. A feather is light, but it has the ability to make someone take flight. It's strong. I hope that makes sense.
We're not supposed to be carrying around all this nonsense that anchors you to this hell realm. We're supposed to be light as a feather. It's a metaphor. But continuing, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen people's entire framework of thinking shift overnight when they start doing the cleanses and the next morning after they take the herbs at night, they eliminate massive amounts of waste and they feel so good. They haven't felt that good in years because they've become used to what it feels like to have massive amounts of waste in their gut. And that's what most people are doing walking around this matrix. They've got years of crap inside of their systems. Not only physical feces, I'm talking about mucus byproducts from having that stuff stuck in their system, parasites, biofilms, ladies and gentlemen, undigested food. It's insane. I, I've seen things with my own eyes that come out of my system that would blow the average person's mind. It's just, most people have no clue just how serious this issue is, that the fact that we're plugged, a species of plugged individuals. So, I don't want to make this rant about the philosophy and all this esoteric stuff about, you know, how the or how being constipated affects our energetic body and all that stuff. There's some truth to it. I just want to talk about ways to go about treating constipation. If you currently have a constipation issue, ladies and gentlemen, if you currently have a digestive issue, this should be the first thing that you get fixed. This would be the first thing that you worry about when it comes to getting your health back. Because if you cannot extract nutrients properly out of the foods that you're eating, if you cannot digest the foods that you're eating, see there's a difference between being constipated and not being able to digest or assimilate nutrients out of your system. Sometimes people need to increase their stomach acid levels because they have so low stomach acid. And then sometimes people just need to completely irrigate their system so that they can clear out all of the blockages so that the flow can start, you know, there can be flow again. Um, however, I've kind of tailored a system, a very simple protocol that anyone can begin following um, that will help hopefully your digestion regardless of what your digestive issue is, whether it be bloating, whether it be constipation, whether it be low stomach acid, all of that. Hopefully by following this system, these birds sound really, really pretty cool. Uh, hopefully by following this basic system, it'll help you get some of your digestive capabilities back on track and then everything in tandem will kind of fix itself, ladies and gentlemen. But just remember that, that digestion is the foundation of health. Because if you cannot extract the nutrients out of the foods that you're eating, then you're missing out on the whole purpose of what you are sitting down to eat for. The whole purpose of eating, ladies and gentlemen, is to extract and assimilate the life force, the coding inside of the food, the coding, the codes, the information, um, the nutrients, the minerals, trace constituents, vitamins, amino acids. That's the point of eating. Eating is a form of information transference. When you sit down to eat, you are sitting down to extract information out of the foods that you are sitting down to consume. That food or those nutrients gets bioweaved into your protoplasmic makeup through a process known as the humanizing factor. This is how your body takes certain pieces of the information from the food you're eating and regenerates itself with those constituents. You are indeed what you eat. What you eat becomes you. These are very important concepts to grasp, ladies and gentlemen. So, I just, you know, before we continue with this simple protocol, I just want to drive home the fact that digestion is the pinnacle here. Without digestion, your life is, you're not going to be able to extract nutrients. You're going to walk around with excessive amounts of pressure in your gut. You're going to put strain on all of your internal organs. You're going to carry around a bunch of shit, mucus, you name it, because your pipes aren't cleared. It's just, it's of utmost importance that you work on your digestion because once you get your pipes cleaned, ladies and gentlemen, once you get flow, then you can start worrying about truly saturating yourself with the highest quality foods because you'll actually be able to extract them. You'll actually be able to digest them. So oftentimes, ladies and gentlemen, people's digestive issues are simply predicated upon simple fixes like iodine deficiencies. A lot of people, I'd say the majority of the people in the matrix that I, I come into contact with and communicate with, talk to and even witness and watch, they are all iodine deficient. Every single part of your body requires iodine, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a direct and de there was a deliberate 
agenda behind when they took iodine out of the bread back in the day, when they started taking it out of the toothpaste, ladies and gentlemen. When they started removing iodine from the American diet, when they started stripping iodine out of foods that have had, that had had, or that underwent, under, I can't speak today, excuse me. Let's take, get a sip of warm coffee. It's cold as hell out here. Early on, the control grid, our, the Archons, started taking out, ladies and gentlemen, or they started removing iodine from the mainstream diet. Because iodine is crucial to every single one of your cells' health. It's crucial to every single one of your organs and their health. It's crucial to the expansion of your mind, ladies and gentlemen, your pineal gland especially, your pituitary, your pineal, hypothalamus, all of this stuff. Your thyroid requires adequate levels of, um, of iodine. IQ levels are directly related to iodine as well, ladies and gentlemen. Intelligence levels. Thought I just saw someone out of the corner of my eye, excuse me. When they started taking iodine out of the food supply, when they started stripping it out of a lot of the things that they had put, you know, they would fortify foods back in the day and certain things with iodine. But uh, when they started largely taking the iodine out of the food supply, intelligence levels started to decrease, ladies and gentlemen. Crime started to increase, however. Uh, general illness, just across the board, there are so many things linked to low iodine. So, if you follow the system standards, however, they'll tell you that we don't really need all that much iodine, and that just by living a standard American diet and making sure to eat certain food groups that you'll get sufficient iodine, you might get sufficient enough iodine to regulate, you know, to keep you from getting a goiter. You might get enough iodine to lightly stimulate your thyroid, just enough to keep you healthy, ladies and gentlemen. That's how the matrix does things. The RDAs, the, recon the recommended daily intake or allotments that the matrix recommends for us is more often than not just barely enough to keep you healthy and functioning. They recommend just enough vitamin C to keep you from getting scurvy or just enough vitamin D to keep you from getting rickets or just enough iodine to keep your thyroid you know, relatively functioning so you don't get a goiter and you think you're, you have enough in your system. Just enough magnesium, they recommend. Uh, you know, just the, the just the barely enough magnesium to keep your heart functioning relatively, somewhat well. But they, it's just amazing. They they lowball the s the the. I can't speak today because of how cold it is, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. <laughs> I think you get my, my. I think you catch the drift of what I'm trying to say here. So for me personally, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> my when I started experiencing digestive issues it was largely due to an iodine deficiency. And I did an iodine patch test. I'll show you guys how to do those in the near future. But I started taking nascent iodine, and within a few days, everything had situated itself back to normal. I'd say within about a week and a half, not a few days, about a week and a half. My digestion was back on track. A lot of my older videos, even when I first started my channel, I talked about this. I talked about the importance of iodine, getting your iodine levels back up. It's crucial. I need to make an entire video just on iodine because this is a master nutrient, a master mineral that regulates your thyroid health, ladies and gentlemen. It helps your thyroid produce hormones that regulate your metabolism, that help you re regulate your heart function and your muscle function and your digestive function. So many people are mineral deficient, are nutrient deficient. They're severely lacking in certain constituents like iodine. And then they get constipated, they get all these health ailments from specific nutrient, targeted nutrient deficiencies. They go to the doctor and the doctor recommends something like Metamucil or an over-the-counter or even a prescription um, laxative. Ladies and gentlemen, using laxatives to be able to take a shit when the underlying cause of your issues are a lack of balance within your health, whether it be lack of iodine, lack of minerals, uh, you, maybe you're eating the wrong foods. Maybe you have a food allergen to the food you're eating. Maybe you don't drink enough water. This is what I mean when I say that doctors really, they have their heads up their asses, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. I have to say that, you know. I'm not saying that any of the stuff that I'm telling you is medical fact because it's not. I'm just telling you my own personal experience that I've had. And I've been through the thick and thin with low health and being able, or in experimenting with low health and getting it back up to normal. I personally believe that I've done more than my with my health 
and more experiments on myself than any doctor ever will in his entire lifetime. So what's more important to you, credentials or experience? There's a time and a place for both, and that's what the mainstream model of health and medicine doesn't understand. They think that in order for you to know anything about health, you have to have some degree. It's ridiculous. This is bullshit. The system that we're living in is, is just absolutely backwards. So you get, you have a constipation issue, maybe because you, you eat a ton of fiber and you don't drink enough water. You drink cola all day, which, you know, is destroying your gut microbiome. You know, it has a diuretic effect because of all the caffeine. You're eliminating all the water from your system and your colon doesn't have enough hydration to accurately undertake peristalsis, the digestive contractions that the digestive muscles produce. So you go to the doctor and he, oh, you, you know, we're going to put you on a prescription laxative which is gonna further pull more water out of the intestines and whatnot and severely dehydrate you. This whole system, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely backwards and just insane. And that's why if you are serious about your own well-being, you better take advantage of your time now, ladies and gentlemen, and work on your health. Because the more you neglect taking care of your health, the more you you know absorb all the blue light from the electronic devices and don't get good sleep, the more you do all this stuff, the more your hormones get all fucked up and out of whack, your neurotransmitters, and you start, you know, your entire circadian rhythm, your bio clock, your biorhythms get so out of place that you know, when you finally do get into a state of bad health, you can't just immediately go back to normal. That's why taking advantage of your time now, ladies and gentlemen, is of utmost importance. That's why I put so much emphasis on time. Time is either your best friend or your worst enemy. And sure, you can kill time now while you have some health reserves built up. But let me tell you, when things hit the fan and you've chewed up the majority of your time, you're going to wish you would have spent your time a little bit more wisely. So life is not just this experience where we're here to just have fun and just be reckless. Take care of your health so that you can ensure more time in your life so that you can do more things and have freedom of movement. You can have more range of motion, excuse me. You can have your wellness, your immunity, so that you can live longer and live well. But my, my con I had a severe constipation issue um, a while back and a nascent iodine Boom, completely fixed it. Nascent iodine completely fixed it. So I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, I have a protocol that I put together today on the Patreon page. I wrote it out, it's a very simple protocol. I'm gonna go over it, we're gonna talk about a few other things, and then I'm gonna go inside and warm up. But ladies and gentlemen, let's just go over the protocol. I don't have it written out in front of me, so I'm gonna try to work off my memory. You wanna make sure, if you have digestion issues, to completely and wholeheartedly um, look at what you're eating, write everything that you eat for a week. So get a, I have a, in my photo section here on the Patreon page, ladies and gentlemen, I have a little document, a PDF document that you can print out. It's a food calendar for a seven day period. And it's got little slots where you can write out everything that you uh, eat throughout the day. Print one of those out, start on Monday, preferably, or whatever, whatever day. I mean, you want to take advantage now, but Monday's a great time to start. And then start for a week writing down everything that you consume. And then after the week is up, look at what you've eaten and ask yourself, is that really what you should be eating? Because most people, ladies and gentlemen, eat unconsciously. They graze, they eat stuff, and then they forget. It's amazing. Do you remember what you ate yesterday? Do you remember what you ate the day before? A lot of people eat and don't remember what they're consuming. And because of that, they're in this kind of like narcoleptic, half-conscious um, state where they just graze without even knowing what they're doing. So becoming more conscious about what you're doing of your actions is crucial here. So this is what this is for. Write down what you do or eat for a week so that you can look back after a week and, and see what you're doing and look at if what you're doing is wrong. Because oftentimes, ladies and gentlemen, people again are unconsciously eating and by making it an effort or making an effort, excuse me, to write down what you're consuming on a daily basis. It keeps you accountable. It retrains your mental muscles to be conscious of what you're doing instead of just randomly getting up when you're bored and grazing or just shoving shit into your mouth for the hell of it. Writing down what you're eating is gonna teach you to be accountable. It's gonna stimulate those mental muscles so that you start to build a filter between your impulses. So that when the urge to eat comes up, you can start fortifying your mind with a shield. I hope that makes sense. So this is crucial. 
look back after a week at what you've eaten. Now, I've been preaching for a while now that 70% of what you eat, 70% of what you eat should be whole foods, foods that God made. If it's edible and it grew out of the ground, eat it. If you're an omnivore, you can have things like ground beef or steak or, but not the, you know, chicken nuggets from the store that have all the breading and all the garbage on them. I'm talking about wholesome, real foods. Instead of mashed potatoes, for instance, in a, in a um, you know, instant mashed potatoes, you make your own. You boil your, your mashed potatoes, then you can add some oil or some butter and some salt and some seasoning, maybe some nutritional yeast, some chives, you're good to go. Everything that you're eating now that you love that's garbage, that comes in a processed container, you can make at home with real ingredients and it can be saturated with, 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 with true healing energy. Stop buying all the processed bullshit from the store, ladies and gentlemen. So 70% of your diet should be things like fruits, cooked vegetables as well as raw vegetables. You want to be careful though because if you try to eat too much raw food as with, if, if you try to eat too many raw foods by themselves, if you have a digestive issue, it might make your digestive issues uh, even worse, ladies and gentlemen, especially the bloating. Because uh, sometimes for certain people's digestive systems, uh, raw plant fibers, cellulose, you name it, can be really difficult to digest. So cooking the vegetables, like tender dark leafy greens, that makes it really easy to digest. What I like to do is my body likes a mixture of both. So my body really likes when I mix raw foods with, it, my body really likes when I mix raw foods with cooked foods. And what I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen, is like I'll, I'll go to the store and get a really nice uh, loaf of bread, I'll cut it in half, then I'll take some avocado and some salt and some seasonings, mix it into the avocado in a bowl and make a mash and then spread it on both sides of the bread. And then I'll lay out a big old handful of homegrown sprouts, a giant amount of sprouts. Then I'll put some onions, some vegetables, some things like raw um, bell peppers. I'll put fire roasted bell peppers in there as well. Then I'll put some cooked, um, like a spare, whatever, a mixture of raw and cooked vegetables with the bread. And then I eat that and my body can digest that so well. My body actually prefers that I consume raw vegetables with good quality bread. You want to eat a lot of raw food? You want to become 90% raw foodist, ladies and gentlemen? Start making vegetable sandwiches. You can use things like hummus to lubricate the bread, or if you, you can use mayonnaise if you want. I would prefer that you use something like home, homemade mayonnaise if you're going to use, use mayonnaise, or you can even use a soy-free veganaise, um, which is processed, but it's not a bunch of garbage, ladies and gentlemen. There's certain processed foods that don't overstep the boundaries too bad. There's certain processed foods that aren't that bad but you just want to make sure that even those types of foods, you want to keep them to an, a minimum. So for me, ladies and gentlemen, my body can digest with af absolute ease things like um, cooked bok choy. I'll make bok choy with soy sauce, fry it in a stir fry pan, and then add onions, bell peppers, beans, uh, and some rice, and then I'll just toss that and you know eat that. It's fucking delicious. I'll put homegrown jalapenos on it and eat it with a veggie sandwich. One thing I want to throw in here really quickly about beans is that a lot of people can't digest beans. They experience a lot of digestive issues. So what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is instead of buying your beans in a can, get some pinto beans. Those are the ones that cook the quickest, or uh, Peruvian beans, preferably. Put them in. A, take two cups of beans, put it in a, 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 a pot, fill it with hot water about four inches above the beans, and then put a teaspoon of baking soda for each cup of beans that you put in the water. And then bring your beans up to a boil, let them boil for about five minutes, then turn it off and cover the lid, turn the heat off, let it sit for an hour, and when the hour's up, bring the, the pot back up to a boil, let it boil for 10 minutes, and then cover it and let it sit for another hour. Let it, you know, let it sit un with the heat off. So essentially, all you're doing is you're not even really cooking them very long. You're bringing the water up to a boil twice, then you're turning it off. So again, for each cup of beans that you cook, dry beans. Take a cup of dry beans, pinto beans for instance, let's just say we're cooking two cups of dry pinto beans. Two cups of dry pinto beans in a, in a metal pot. I put water above it by four inches above the beans. I put two teaspoons of baking soda in the water. I bring it up to a boil. I let it boil for five minutes. I turn the heat off, cover it, let it sit for an hour. Once the hour's up, bring it up to a boil. Let it cook for 10 minutes or boil for 10 minutes. 
turn it off after that, cover it and let it sit for an hour. The baking soda is going to go into the bean and deactivate some of the uh, sugars and whatnot that make beans very hard to digest. You're going to notice that if you cook your beans like this, they are going to be very tender and easier to digest. Beans are a very good food. Unfortunately, most people can't digest them and it's usually predicated upon how people are cooking them. There's a, a herb called azapote, I believe, that the uh, Spanish would use, or the, Mex the Mexican culture uses, excuse me. They cook their beans with this and it makes them much more digestible. Beans are a perfect protein, ladies and gentlemen, but they have to be able to be assimilated so many people are eating beans thinking that they're getting protein from it, and they're not. So I just wanted to put that emphasis in there. Make 70% of your diet whole foods. Make 30% whatever you want. It's a really easy protocol to follow. Anyone can follow this system. It's not that difficult. Preferably, as you move up the ranks of this, you're going to want to get it to the point where about 90% of the foods you're eating are whole foods. Cooked vegetables, uh, raw vegetables. Whatever you want, you know, the, the vegetable sandwich thing is the way to get a lot of raw foods into your system. I like to eat a massive amounts of, amount of sprouts, ladies and gentlemen, that's my thing. And putting sprouts, putting raw vegetables on a piece of on bread with avocado, the easiest way to enjoy a, raw, a predominantly raw food diet. Simple as fuck. So the 70-30 split is crucial. If you have digestive issues during all, the, first of all, what I'd like to recommend also, ladies and gentlemen, and I forgot to put this on the protocol and I'll go in and edit it and add it, is that once a week, consume the, um, on a Saturday or a Sunday, whenever you have a day after the night you take this tea where you don't have to go to work or something, do this. I've made a video about this. I have a, it's about four minutes, super easy, or super quick video to watch. Traditional medicinals has a, a tea called Smooth Move. You drink this, a cup of this, before bed once a week and it's going to help push out any accumulated wastes inside of your system that are leading to auto intoxication to putrefaction rancidification and fermentation in your gut part of getting your digestive tract online ladies and gentlemen is, is giving it a, some assistance because you have a lot of plumbing that's probably clogged the herbal laxative tea the smooth move tea it's a senna based tea with licorice and a handful of other herbs it's going to help you get rid of this accumulated waste sometimes people digest di sometimes people's digestive issues are fixed immediately after just a couple of rounds of, of laxative herbs to get the waste out of your system so not to make this too long ladies and gentlemen the second thing i would recommend is get your minerals back up the easiest way to do this and i thought i had a jar to show you is the uh I think I have one in my pocket, is the Shilajit, ladies and gentlemen. I use the Symbiotica Shilajit. This works really well. Uh, you start off with a quarter gram a day and you work your way up, you know, the, the ladder. Get your minerals back into your system. Do this on an empty stomach at first to, make, to allow you to see how it makes you feel. And then start consuming the Shilajit, little sips of it throughout meals as well. The meals are going to help you digest and assimilate the minerals in the Shilajit. Shilajit has over 80 minerals in it that are bioavailable. It's mixed with humic and fulvic acids. These acids greatly assimilate or assist the body in breaking down these minerals and uptaking them. You know, your entire body operates on minerals. They are like the spark plugs that run the show of life. And without adequate minerals, you're not going to be able to digest a good goddamn thing. Your mind's not going to operate properly, ladies and gentlemen. Every part of your health, such as but not limited to your digestive functions, your cognitive functions, your heart functions, they're going to be hindered if you don't have adequate levels of minerals. Shilajit is the easiest way to get minerals back into your system. You start off with a small glass of Shilajit, a quarter gram a day, and then you can work your way up to a gram a day if you want. Siberian, uh, the Russian, excuse me, Shilajit is good. The Himalayan, there's Shilajit from all across the globe. I, re I recommend the Symbiotica Pure Black Company, or Symbiotica teamed up with Pure Black to produce this particular formula of Shilajit, which is relatively expensive. It's, however, this particular product, the Symbiotica Shilajit, has more of the precious metals in it than the regular Pure Black. So I think it has 300 parts per million of gold and it's got about 50 parts per million of silver. I've said it once and I've said it again, the precious metals help advance the alchemical mindset if you're open to the shifts in your electromagnetic field that can take place if you ground yourself enough and do enough of the uh, 
That's the word I'm looking for. All I'm saying is that the, this is a magical substance. I'll, I'll make a video just on shilajit and I'll talk about the metals and the alchemy, alchemy of metals in the near future. I want to make this just about digestion, excuse me. So again, quarter gram a day, start off with that, work your way up. The third thing I think I recommended on that list was iodine, supplemental iodine. Look into iodine therapy, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of suppressed information on iodine. Iodine is one of the keys to getting the fluoride out of your system. It competes with the, the negative halogens, ladies and gentlemen. It competes with things like bromide. Iodine is crucial to your health and well-being. It is crucial for your mind to have adequate levels of, you know, uh, excuse me, when you give your body adequate levels of, of uh, iodine, suddenly you start to not give a shit about the little things that normally bug you. The little things that people are anxious about. There's so much chronic anxiety nowadays. They start to lessen. And before you know it, if you get your iodine levels back up to normal, not only is your mind operating better, but every aspect of your physiology is working better because every single one of your cells needs iodine. Every major organ system in your body needs iodine. And they have specifically targeted iodine, this master nutrient, and made sure that most of the foods are deficient in iodine. And you're not going to get adequate levels of iodine, ladies and gentlemen, from just eating spirulina and taking dulse and taking the sea vegetables. I'm sorry, but that's just not how it works. For instance, people think that spirulina, and I used to think this as well, is high in B12. Yeah, it's high in B12, but it's a pseudo type of B12. It's called pseudo B12. It's not even assimil assimilable by the human body. Spirulina is amazing for its pigments, for its colors, for the way it cools the gastrointestinal system, for its large concentrations of chlorophyll and its blood cleansing capabilities because of high concentrations of chlorophyll. But B12 is, you're not going to get any B12. You might get a little bit out of spirulina, but not enough. In the same way, you're not going to get adequate levels of iodine from spirulina. So I recommend, I don't, I'm not recommending, I'm telling you what I do. I take nascent iodine and I also take a product that is considered a tri-iodine, which can, is composed of potassium iodide, nascent iodine, and another form of iodine. So ladies and gentlemen, the, probably the greatest iodine product on the market is Dr. Gr Edward Group's iodine. It's called Detoxidine. It's $30 for a little bottle, but I believe there's over 200 servings. It's like three drops a day. That is the greatest form of rare earth mineral iodine, the purple crystals. It's amazing stuff. Detoxidine, $30 a bottle, 200 servings. That's a hell of a steal. That's a steal. So when you get adequate levels of iodine back into your system as well, ladies and gentlemen, you start to interact with nature much differently as well because your eyes require iodine, your mind, these, your cognitive functions, your brain needs iodine. Again, like I said earlier, low iodine levels are directly related to low IQ low intelligence level, bad memory. It also, when you're low in iodine, it makes you passive, it makes you weak, it makes you non, uh, non it makes you, it makes you complacent. So you want to interact with nature's biofields, you want to, or nature's energy more, you want to experience alchemical consciousness, consider looking into iodine. I've been talking about iodine for years, Lugol's iodine, different concentrations of iodine, rare earth mineral, nascent iodine. There's so much of the good stuff out there, or excuse me, there's so much out there, but unfortunately iodine, I believe the only certified organic type of iodine is Dr. Group's iodine from the Global Healing Center. So that's the one I would advise looking into. Um, sometimes, and you know, iodine feeds the thyroid. The thyroid largely regulates bowel functions. That says enough right there. If you're low in iodine, your master gland, your thyroid, which is like the center of the Starship Enterprise, it controls the rest of the part, car, the uh, ship's parts. That's what the, the thyroid largely does. This butterfly-shaped gland that sits behind right over in this region, ladies and gentlemen. It controls the rest of your body's glands and whatnot. It's, it stimulates, there's so many things, I'm not gonna get into it, excuse me. And there's a lot of mysteries to the thyroid that we currently don't know yet, that modern science is either withholding or modern medicine is either withholding us off of, from us on purpose or they're just not aware of how sacred this gland is and how important it is to the biofield, the assemblage point, and human enlightenment. What else did I put on that list? Uh, take a multivitamin, multimineral at least three, or two to three times a week. Sometimes, however, ladies and gentlemen, if that particular multivitamin has iron in it, iron can cause constipation. So that's why I recommend the K-Pax Immune that has a very low percentage of iron in it. And it's, a, it's I believe, a bisglycinate form of iron or a chelated form of iron that's much easier on the system. 
if you have constipation issues, you're going to only want to, you, you know, regardless of whether you have constipation issues or not, a multivitamin and multimineral is crucial. So you have adequate levels of selenium. Now you want to use to the greatest of your ability and to be able to afford, you're going to want to use Shilajit, ladies and gentlemen, to get your minerals. But you, I'm, I'm a huge fan of using synthetics as well as naturals. So with vitamins, ladies and gentlemen, supplemental vitamins are crucial. Capax Immune also not only has minerals and vitamins, but it has a very powerful mitochondrial support system blend uh, in that formula that's going to feed your mitochondria. Things like coenzyme Q10, N uh, N-acetylcysteine. Um, there's a handful. I believe there's some carnitine in there as well. Your mitochondria is the, the uh, engine of your cell and uh, cells, plural, 100,000 plus cells. And most of us have mitochondria that are severely fatigued and not even working properly. So not only is that vitamin, multivitamin, multimineral, K-Pax immune going to give you vitamins, minerals, trace constituents, it's also got a bioflavonoid complex in it, but it's gonna wake up your mitochondria. K-Pax energy is another great one too, ladies and gentlemen. These formulas are relatively expensive, but we live in a world where you get what you pay for. You can waste money and get a lot of something that doesn't work very well, or you can spend your money wisely and get something that's going to work well, even though it's a little bit more. What else was on that? Oh, that list. Drink at least three or four cups of clean water a day, ladies and gentlemen. If you drink a lot of teas and whatnot, if you take a lot of supplements, oftentimes they have a diuretic quality to them. And if, you're di if you have digestive issues and you're flushing water out of your system because you're consuming so many diuretics, your digestive system isn't going to have enough, it's not going to have enough hydration and lubrication to function properly. So sometimes, I shit you not, sometimes people who drink nothing but Coke or, or drink nothing but um, like coffee all day, when they start to drink three cups of clean filtered water a day, their digestion starts working again. Imagine that. So using all of these tools in tandem with one another can really help bring about a massive change, not only in your health, but in your overall health, but especially your digestive functions. The protocol that I just laid out is a simple health protocol that's not just geared towards digestive health, but it will indeed, in my opinion, target digestive health largely due to the increase in things like the smooth move tea, the increase in hydration through water. Um, the minerals are going to help regulate your body's functions, your thyroid, your digestive system. So again, this protocol is, I kind of named it a digestive protocol, but it's a basic health protocol. That's all it is. And basic health, you know, once you get your basic health back in track, your digestive system starts to work better. So protocols that just gear towards certain things like, oh, this is a protocol for your colon, this is a protocol for your liver. That's cool and all, but we should instead strive to make protocols that work on the entire health system instead of just targeting specific regions of the body because we know through studying the Tao, the five to 8,000 year old practice that's the foundation of uh, modern acupuncture, ladies and gentlemen, traditional Chinese medicine, we know that everything is connected by studying the Tao, studying the ancient alchemists, studying the ancient systems of healing like Ayurveda, everything is connected. If you take something for your organ, or for your liver, it's gonna affect every other part of your system. So whole health, addressing health from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, that's the key, not just targeting certain regions. Always remember that your body is a hydration machine and that if you consume too many diuretic constituents, even though they have massive health benefits, diuretics like coffee and things like that, they can pull too much water out of your system. So rehydrating the system getting your minerals back in and I recommend never taking Shilajit in a pill form ladies and gentlemen get the resin put it in water dissolve it in water and then drink that you are a vehicle your body is an interstellar hyper dimensional incredibly advanced God machine that just needs to be put back in alignment through our inner compass needs to be reawakened and we need to do that in tandem with I'm starting to babble ladies and gentlemen I hope that this video helps you, and until next time, peace be with you.